Hi, welcome to Coder Dojo Virtual Edition. My name is Lori. This is session three in our fall edition of Coder Dojo, where we're learning how to develop and code our own website using HTML. To get started, I'm going to show you the HTML coding that I've worked on since our last session. I suggested that you add additional titles and additional text in paragraphs to make your website fuller and more realistic. You'll see that I have added additional headlines, additional text, and I'm setting the stage to have a really full-bodied website. Here's my website so far, and this is what I developed using only the skills that we've been introduced to in the first two sessions. You'll see that I have a heading here, but I also added two more headings. This was with the tag H1. This heading is H2, and this heading is H3. You'll notice that HTML automatically makes them smaller, less accentuated as the numbers go down. I also added text to each of the paragraphs so that we'll have more to work with when we start to stylize our work. Remember, we understand that this is very boring and basic, but in order to move on to CSS, well, where we will stylize our website, we need to learn the basic HTML language. So going back to open the code that we saved last week, because I'm on a Mac, I will go up here to the magnifying glass those of you on PCs will go to your notepad and here I'll type in text edit. Here is my test page that I work with, but I want to show you the code that I did to get to this particular website that I'm demonstrating here. Here's the code that I was working with and while it looks like a lot when you um, first log in, Let's break it down into the components that we've already learned. Here's our declaration statement that we know we have to start each HTML document with. Here's our HTML opening code that tells our browser that we're using HTML. Here is our heading, which is the title that's going to show up in your browser. So KFPL HTML shows up in the browser but does not show up on our website. And then we get into the body. Here's our opening tag and our closing body tag. And everything in between these two tags will show up on our page. So our first line to show up will be H1 the heading, KFPL, Introduction to HTML. Following that H1 heading, I have these four lines of text to form the first paragraph. And all I've done is talk about um, what we were going to discuss, what we did discuss in the Introduction to HTML first session. H2, my second heading, is just to summarize how HTML is all about tags. You can see again, I've got several different lines to form the paragraph. And then my next heading is sections in your HTML. So that's where I talk about the head element, the title tag, um, and the body section. And that's where I've left off. For clarification, I have gone through and taken out the P tag at in, in between each line 
in this last paragraph. So what you will see is that this last section is actually a paragraph because I have a P tag at the beginning and a closing P tag at the end. In the first two sections, I actually made each sentence a paragraph and what that has resulted in is each sentence is on a different line. Um, I could have done that as well by using the line break, but I've done it this way. Each line, I've done a separate pair of opening and closing P tags, and then there's um, it's well spaced. In this section, you'll see, I'll render it in a minute, that it comes out in a complete paragraph form. So let's save this and then render this document and there's the difference. So this is with uh, P tags at the beginning and end of each line and this is a p tag at the beginning and end of the sentences that make up the paragraph before we get started looking at lists i'd like to introduce you to how we can add spaces between words and i'll demonstrate in a minute but for now, the important piece is to know that this particular combination means one space on your keyboard. So unlike using your regular word processing software where a space shows up in the final product, a space will not show up in your website as HTML is pre-programmed to add one space after every series of letters. And if you add more spaces, it won't recognize that. So adding this code here will add one space. If you want more than one space, you will have to copy and paste this code as many times as spaces you wish to see. Let's then go to the test page that you have saved on your desktop. And right here, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use this new code we learned. So I'm gonna ask a question. How can I leave spaces in words? Okay, so uh, first I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to try. How can I leave spaces between words? Don't forget my closing tag. Okay, save this. And you can see here it hasn't. So how can I leave spaces between words? Why are there no spaces in there? Let's go and try and address this problem. So here's my code again. How can I leave spaces between words? New line. Let's try entering this code. Um, here we go. The and sign NBSP. And I'm going to do that. Oh four or five times and then say to see if this works. Closing tag, save as. Okay, now we're going to want to pull it up again. And there we have it. Let's try entering this code. You can see the spaces are there now, where in this line we had no spaces. 
The next thing we want to look at before we get to lists is if you want to add blank lines in your text, simply scrolling down through your code and leaving several lines, it will not show up in your website. So again, there's a code for leaving blank lines, and this is called the line break. We can leave as many line breaks as we want, again, to correspond with the number of lines we want to leave open. The one thing to notice here with the line break, this code here, there is no opening and closing tag. It's simply this one element. So one of the few times we don't have to worry about a closing tag. Let's go to our page and enter a few of those and see what we can do with that. So let's say in this paragraph, but between asking my question and then replying to it, I'm just going to put some line breaks in. There's one. I'll copy and paste that. So I will now put these each on a different line so that we can see more clearly what it is we're trying to do here. Let's save this. And you can see all these spaces between the two lines. Now, I didn't show you how if I just hit my return bar after this line, and entered this line much lower, it would have showed up one line right under the other. We're now in ready to introduce lists. There are two kind of lists we can use in HTML. We can use an unordered list with the tag UL or an ordered list with the tag OL. The difference between these two types of lists is quite simply, unordered list will give you a bulleted list and an ordered list will result in a numbered list. For both types of lists, however, you will embed a list tag in between your UL or OL. So it will look like this. Here's your opening unordered list tag and slip over to here. Here's your closing unordered list tag. Okay. And we will have a list tag embedded in it. Here's our list opening tag and our list closing tag and what happens in here is part of your list. Let's get started making our first list. So as we said we can do an ordered list or an unordered list. I'm going to do an unordered list first. Remember this is the tag for our unordered list. So let's get this element in here, and here's the closing tag. Inside, embedded in our unordered list, we have to put a list tag. I'm just going to tab in to do that so it's easier to see. Here's our list tag, and we have to put the closing tag. You can do your closing tag after. I like to start with it because then I'm not going to forget to close it. I'm going to make this list a list of primary colors. So the first thing in my list is going to be red. For the next items in my list, to keep it simple, I'm just going to copy and paste this and change it with my new color. Red, yellow. Again, I'm just going to paste 
tab in, I'm only tabbing in to separate from the rest of the code to make it easier for you to see. The, the um, HTML does not care where you put it. It will all show up the same. So here's our unordered list element, closing tag, our list element, opening and closing tag at the beginning and end of each item in your list. Let's save this and see what we have. And there you see an unordered list. That's why it's bulleted. Let's try and add an ordered list now. I'm going to do that by simply um, copying each thing in our unordered list. Make some space for this. Let's just copy this. Instead of an unordered list, we want it to be an ordered list. So that's an O L. So now we have our O L with our lists embedded. Let's save this. Go back to our doc, and this is our unordered list, and this is our ordered list. Now, we, when we get into CSS, we will be able to take away the numbers or bullets. We will be able to stylize this to make it into a very attractive list that you might want to use on a menu. Stay tuned, and we'll get there.